Hi, my name is Rob and I'm a woodworker. Welcome back to my shop. If you've been following along the tool chest build, you'll know that I've finished the front blades or dividers for the case as well as the runners and kickers. So at this point, I'm ready to start gluing up the project. All right, I got a little bit ahead of myself and we're not quite at the point where I can glue yet. If you'll recall in the original design, I decided to do a full drawer on the first two levels and then I wanted to split up the next two levels with dual drawers. Now once I have this carcass assembled or at least dry assembled I can see how narrow this top drawer is and so I thought it might make sense to try to split this up into three drawers instead of two. It'll be a little bit more work but I think it'll be visually appealing. I did double check the stock that I milled already for the drawer fronts and between the two pieces that I milled for the top I can get a third out of there that will fit in these drawers so that's it's still an option so it's something I'm going to explore and once I construct those vertical dividers then I also need to do the runners and kickers behind them to support the inside edges of those drawers. So that's what I'm going to focus on in this episode and then once that's complete then I'll be ready to glue up. So for this episode, I'm going to pull out a secret weapon and I'm going to be wearing my finest pair of cargo shorts the entire time I do this joinery and that's going to give me the best opportunity to make sure that I nail this. So what I did is I went ahead and I cut some scrap pieces that fit exactly in the openings for the vertical dividers and they basically just represent where the dividers will go. I've also cut a piece of MDF and put it in the, the back of the case really just to um, remove the distraction of being able to see through the case and it kind of helps um, visualize a little bit better and as you'll see later on that's also going to help me with my glue up. Um, I started out and I just divided this third tier of drawers um, right down the middle. Uh, that was pretty easy. But that left me with sort of the debate of how to divide up these uh, top drawers. I started out and just divided them evenly three ways and it just looked a little bit too structured and a little bit too rigid in, in the form. So I decided to play around with it a little bit. I did one option where I had an almost square middle drawer and then I left uh, much wider drawers on the sides. I liked how that looked, but when I started to think about it, the size of that drawer was gonna be so small that it was gonna be almost useless. You wouldn't even be able to get your hand in there because it would be pretty narrow. So here's the formation that I ended up deciding on. And basically, it's a fairly simple formula. The side drawers are exactly two-thirds the width of the middle drawer. So it sort of gives some balance and it gives some uh, sort of ratio or rhyme and reason to the, the widths. I also played around with trying to use the exact same proportion from this drawer in a uh, middle drawer, but it just didn't look right. So this is the um, final kind of configuration that I think looks the best and is the most useful when I finish the piece. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be putting in these drawers but it makes them wide enough that I can still use them and get a decent amount of stuff in there while also balancing a nice visual appeal for the, the layout of the drawers. Like a lot of the other aspects of this project I'm going to cut these sliding dovetails into the dividers and I'm going to do it through a combination of hand tools and power tools and this is going to be a little bit different than um, doing the uh, the drawer blades or dividers because I don't have to actually set the dovetail into a dado this time so I can just do a straight sliding dovetail. Now I've gone ahead and drawn kind of what the the dovetail will look like. It's going to extend 5 16 of an inch tall and I want to leave it relatively wide so that it's structurally sound. Now, you can see where those black marks are. That's basically the waste that I'll need to remove to cut the tails in the uh, vertical dividers. Um, I'm going to do that by machine because it would be very, very difficult for me to actually get a saw kerf into the top of this piece and cut those tails out. So it's going to be a lot easier for me to do that using my router table and then I will basically use those tails to mark the pins on the, uh, the horizontal dividers and then I'll set them in. Now I'm using a tall piece of stock 
to cut my first tail because I'm going to cut that first tail and then line the shoulder up into my case and then I'm going to mark where that second shoulder needs to be and make sure that I've got this uh, set perfectly and so I'll, I'll cut the, the second tail after the fact and that'll make sure that I have the shoulders the exact right width. So then I can bring that piece over and actually just get it to sit right on that shoulder so I know it's perfect. And then I'll just make a mark where the top shoulder needs to start. I've extended that line just by using my square and then I just take my 5 16 inch setup block lay it down on that mark and make a second mark and that's the final length I need this piece to be. So then I just come over to my miter saw and line up my cut with that second mark and I've got the final length and then I just cut my dovetail on the other side. And before I do that, I'm just gonna double check that my mark meets exactly at the top of the blade, which it does. So that means I have everything dialed in properly. And then just a quick double check will show me that my shoulders meet perfectly between the dividers. Now, these sliding dovetails don't need to go all the way through. They really only need to go through a little bit to lock everything in place. And obviously, a uh, shorter sliding dovetail is a lot easier to cut, and it's also a lot easier to cut the sockets. So I look at this piece, and I kind of decide which is the better show side, and I like this side better. I've got my marking gauge here set to the same width as the piece of stock and that's how deep I'm going to make the sliding dovetail. So I just go and make a mark off using the front of that show side and then I'll just put an X there so I know that that's the part I'm going to waste out and then I just turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now since this cut and the part I'm wasting out is not going to show, I really don't have to be super careful. So I'm just going to use my carcass saw for this, making sure that I'm wasting out the right side. And the only thing I really need to be careful of here is just to not really extend past that shoulder. Even then, it wouldn't be killer because this is all inside of the case right here. So I'm just using the fastest method possible. And then I just flip the board or the piece horizontally and I'm not even making a mark here I'm just going to use those shoulders to set my mark and remove that weight. Now I have the case laying down on its back because it's going to make this um, marking exercise a little bit easier. I also still have the piece of MDF inset into the rabbit in the back of the case keeping the uh, the entire case square while I do this because that's pretty important. Now because I've cut out the back sides of these tails it's pretty easy for me to just drop this in and let it sit right on top of those front rails and now I also have my combo square set here so that the distance from the outside of the case to the inside of this vertical divider gives me the exact right width of this drawer. And then I just double check both sides and make sure that they're equidistant from the side. And then I also want to just double check and make sure that I'm still square. So I can drop my small square in there and make sure that everything is perfectly square. And that will ensure that when I fit the drawers, everything will fit perfectly. Now that I have my sockets marked, I just have 
the uh, boards disassembled and clamped down on the front of my bench and I actually have it flush with the front of the bench and you'll see why when I start cutting. Um, I do need to just set the a mark for the depth of the socket which I'm doing with my combo square. I just laid that against one of the dovetails. So I'll make that mark and then all I need to do is extend each of these inside lines down to that mark and that will basically just set the inside of my socket. And then I just take my dovetail saw and make sure I have my kerf on the right side and I'm just sighting down so that the kerf lines up with both the top and bottom mark. And I need to get kind of low, which is why I have the board marked or I'll clamp to the front of my bench like this. Then it's really just a matter of cleaning out the waste. And the key is to always just keep making sure you've got an end to your grain. So what I'll do is just waste out small sections at a time. I don't want to blow anything out. And then I'm always cutting that end grain where the saw couldn't quite reach in there. So that way I can always just chip chunks out without having to worry. And redefine those edges again. Those ends sever that end grain. And then take my next pass. It actually goes relatively quickly. And then find my, this is the bottom piece for my right divider. And with any luck, it'll slide right in. And I got a nice clean fit there. Now here's a view in through the back of the case. And I've removed the runners from the top two levels as well as the, uh, the blades in the back. And basically all I have to do now is create the runners and kickers for the center divider. So basically I just need to use a wide enough piece here that it'll give me enough um, material to register on the left and right of this divider to support the drawers. And then I'll have to have a wide one here and here as well. And um, just like I did on the other side, I'll just mortise them back into the, the back of this top blade. And then I'll run it back to here and then I'll mortise and tenon it into the back blades as well. And then all I have to do is just extend one sort of thin strip here that will be the same width as this, as this vertical divider. And that'll just keep the drawer from moving left and right. Now that I've got the final dry assembly, I'll give you a little bit of a fly through on how the web frame works from a, a little bit closer up. So there you can see the, uh, those center rails will have a nice wide surface for those drawers to run on. I will have to put a middle divider that'll get glued on top of each of those rails and that'll just keep the drawer from racking left and right. And I can do that actually after I construct the drawers because that'll let me fine tune how the drawers actually fit in there. And here you can see the sliding dovetails that I did. They're a really nice fit. Not really any uh, noticeable gaps in the joinery there.